Mobiquick has revived their IPO talks and today's nugget section will talk about that. Hi everyone, welcome to the episode of 20th August. Today DIA is bought slightly more than what FIA is sold. The net FIA sell figure for this month has already crossed close to 33,000 crores which is nearly 4 billion dollars. There are talks going around about reduction in GST in life insurance policies. Today SBI Life, HDFC Life stock prices indicate that probably that is going to happen. Indescent after sulking so much for last few days was up finally 2.5%. Hindalco continues to go up 2%. The one which was down most was ONGC. ATEL continues to correct. Apparently there is nothing happening for Bharti that could justify its tall valuations. Because of the steep fall in ATEL and the huge fall in defense shares, the bottom two sectors were telecom and defense. The top two were banking and software. Software continues to rock. Overall, the pattern was okay in favor of bulls. Sector of the day was insurance. Besides LIC, each and every stock was up and up a lot. Defense stocks have been re-rated on the downward side, especially the shipping stocks. Some brokerages are talking about 60 to 70 percent correction in significant stocks. Garden Reach is already 60 percent away from 52 week high. Musgaon Dock is 36 percent away. Cochin Shipyard is 43 percent away. So that may actually happen very soon within this month. Look at Musgaon Dock down 9 percent. GRSE down 7.6 percent. Cochin shipyard a little less but still 4% cut. The volumes on shipping companies are pretty high. This is Musgaon Dock, this is Cochin shipyard, GRSE. Seems like a lot of people are exiting. You will see the euphoria come back again next year somewhere around January, February before the next union budget. Nifty as usual opened with a gap up, came down sharply then went up then consolidated in a very narrow range. Today the range was actually even narrower for most of the day, it was around 30 to 35 points. Same with Bank Nifty, literally 100-200 point range once again. Bank Nifty moves usually this much in 5 minutes in volatile days. The two brand new IPOs, the big ones, Ola and First Cry, both of them corrected nearly 6%. Now I just wanted to highlight the graph of Tata Technologies. This is a Tata company, the PE is less than 40. It is in green which means positive EPS yet it has been falling like anything. Now you can imagine what could happen to Ola and Brainbees if they don't give positive EPS and reasonable PE very soon. Today greed increased to 53%, yesterday it was 51%. The reason was Nifty was up, Bank Nifty was up, IT was up, Nifty Energy was up, Next 50 was up, just defense was down. Stockwise also mostly Bharti Airtel was down and a small crack in ITC but all other stocks were up. Gold is up, silver is up, the ADRs are looking good, Bitcoin down a bit, rupee has weakened, crude is below 80, it is actually below 78 now. This will now be panic time for some of the oil companies because they will be under pressure to cut prices. No one wants to cut prices though because they have to absorb the losses from previous quarter on account of elections. US markets are doing well, Nvidia was up 4.4% yesterday, Tesla 3%, Apple minor cut but everyone else was partying. Today markets were doing okay but significant stocks actually cracked towards the end in the last 20 minutes just like yesterday, consumption stocks fell a lot. This is ICICI Bank, Reliance, TCS, HDFC, SBI, ITC in any case was going down whole day, so was Airtel. HDFC was strong for half day but then it cracked significantly. Similar was the graph for ICICI. PNB was up continuously, so was Axis, Kotak, Bank of Badoda, Indescent. Besides SBI, most banks had good volumes. Bajaj Finser was up a lot today, 3.3%. So was PFC. Defense is looking really weak. Musgaon Dock, BDL, Cochin Shipyard. GRSE, Data Patterns, Zen Technologies, HAL. The only stocks which recovered a bit were Solar Industries and BEL. Yesterday I talked about Hindustan Zinc nearing the OFS price. Today Hindustan Zinc was up 3.5%. Hindalco continued to zoom. Vedanta was up as well. NMDC up, Sale up. Hindustan Copper was the only metal stock which fell down a lot. Everyone wanted railways, everyone wanted defense till about a month back. Now no one wants them. Basically meaning that the market is full of traders. There is nothing like investment 
in big sectors like railways and defense. IT continues to go up nearly everyone now is at the 52 week line. The power producers and distributors were up, volumes continue to be low. The oil companies today were mixed bag, Reliance was up a little. Godfrey Phillips continues to go up another 11% in addition to the 15% from yesterday. Nothing substantial in any other stock. In the other sector also, literally nothing moved. Not much interest in the consumption sector right now. The sectors which are showing most interest right now, diversified retail, holding companies, software and IT, food and drug retailing. These sectors have been up most in last 10-11 days. The sectors with very low interest, home building and construction, aerospace and defense, hotels, transport infra, beverages. Auto look better today, Tata Motors slightly down, but rest all recovered. Varun beverages down today 1%, Coal India up, RVNL down, but LNT up a bit. Construction materials also, Ultratech and Grasim were up, all other were down. Adani Enterprises down, Trent as usual went up. Estel was up a bit, but home building sector was down today also. Investment banking is seeing a lot of interest. HDFC asset management was up 2.5%. Motilal Oswal 7%. ICI security 6.5%. Angel 1 15%. The sector was up 2.6%. Siemens and ABB both were down but a little only. Pharma up led by Sun Pharma 1.1%. Real estate mixed bag. Nifty 50, 11 stocks down, 39 up. Maximum contribution today came from TCS, Reliance, SBI Life, Bajaj Fincher, Bajaj Finance, SBI. At the same time, Airtel, ONGC, Adani Enterprise, ITC, Sipla, Adani Ports were dragging Nifty down. 10 stocks only out of 50 had high volumes. Next 50, 15 stocks down, 35 up. PFC, ICI Prudential, Bank of Baroda, Cholamandalam, REC, ICI Lombard were up most. HL, Ambuja, Varun Beverages, Gale, IRCTC were down most. Today was another no trading day, no new investment either. These are crazy market levels. I would rather watch from outside. Moby Quick IPO, let me first take you through some material. So today Moby Quick started their marketing again. There was an article on Money Control saying IPO bound Moby Quick back in black. This news is not new. This is the number for last financial year. So this news is perhaps to start creating some interest about the company's IPO in the market. 62% increase in operating revenue. Significant turnaround. Company posted profit of 14 crore compared to loss of 83 crore. This is the consolidated PNL for the financial year ending 31st March 2024. Income increased from 5394 to 8754. This is in INR millions. So if you remove the last zero, that will be crore. So this is 875 crore against 540 crores. Expenses, payment gateway cost, lending operations expenses, financial guarantees, employee benefits, other expenses. 50% of these other expenses were marketing expenses. So while there was an increase of about 340 crore in sales, the expenses increased by about 230 crore only. As a result, a loss of 56 crore became a profit of 37 crores. This is actually not much in terms of variation. 14 crore profit, 80 crore loss, negative EPS of 14.66, positive EPS of 2.38. Now I'm on a site called Unlisted Zone in their public section. Mobiquick's current stock price in the unlisted market is literally 50% of their peak price. The P ratio is 260. Debt to equity is not very high, 1.31. Book value 28.5. The market cap of the company is 3620 crores. Remember the sales was 875 crores. So about 4x of sales. This is okay as a number. However, the P is pretty high. For this particular sale of 875 crore, the EPS is coming out to be very, very low. Now, typically in startups, the EPS actually goes up significantly as the business scales. The revenue, however, is not multiplying. It is growing literally sequentially. Profit after tax is not showing too much of a trend right now that this will explode to say 200 crore, 300 crores like a number, maybe in a year or two year. No such trend is visible. In a public IPO, this year should have indicated phenomenal growth in the year to come in some of the metrics. So some of the concerns I have, this seems like a very expensive stock right now based upon the pre-IPO pricing. The actual IPO may be priced maybe 20%, 30% lower than the pre-IPO price. 
that's a usual trend in terms of business the bnpl business viability is low rbi is not comfortable with bnpl and they have been tightening this particular line of business for significant players including the bnpl card those companies have literally been killed the wallet business is a significant chunk of mobiquix sales but this is becoming a crowded space there are so many wallet players available literally no one cares whether they are using mobiquix wallet or amazon pays wallet they will choose whichever gives better reward there is no concept of loyalty here payment gateway of mobiquick has been popular but again there is no loyalty here i personally as a consumer don't care whether i am paying from mobiquick's gateway or icici's gateway in the long run probably banks payment gateways will work most because banks will be able to bundle their services EDC machine I don't have anything against Mobiquix machines I have not seen them much actually but Pine Labs machines have been doing very well in the market good acceptance good machines I don't know how Mobiquix will compete with them it is perhaps too late for an acquisition there is nothing in this business or their IT stack which someone would want to acquire for example phone pay was acquired when literally there was no major successful company in that space every business here is repeatable here now no one literally needs an expensive acquisition now what if mobiquick closes just a hypothetical question i don't think anyone cares nothing in the world will change people will just switch to another company most businesses also have multiple interfaces no one will only have mobiquick's interface in a second or two second or maybe half an hour they will switch to something else i think mostly promoters investors they just want to get off want to monetize their investments they will be diluting there will not be any new issue of equity at all in my opinion finally i think for mobiquick this is a second attempt it is kind of too late in terms of the ipo season also we are towards the fag end market is at the peak i am usually very skeptical of the ipos that come towards the end of a bull run most of these are overpriced and not great businesses they just want to cash in on the euphoria in the public to invest money in the secondary markets i did this analysis because i was thinking of investing a bit may buy the pre ipo before it hits the ipo but i was not super excited one thing i also noticed was bajaj finance holds 13.95% or 14% stock so they are about the third largest holders i just invest in bajaj finance for the longer term so i'll probably let bajaj finance grow when this company lists if the ipo is good hope this analysis was useful if you disagree with anything do let me know in the comments i'll be happy to answer your questions thanks for watching i'll see you tomorrow